Date Night, The Next Step, Part 2, Hitch's Confession Sonny took the platter and corked the wine back into the kitchen, putting the bottle in the fridge and got the dishes rinsed off and in the dishwasher, which wasn't quite ready for a full cycle. Then she came back out into the living room and made her way towards the stairs, motioning Hitch to join her. Hitch visibly swallowed, but stepped out of the living room and followed his mare friend up the stairs to her bedroom. He had spent more time on the top floor than he had in here, and hadn't been in here at all since the repair and rebuild. But while the construction teams modernized where they could, they stayed true to the original blueprints when it came to layout. Her bedroom's layout had remained largely unchanged, as she had put everything back the way it was before Sprout's demolition. The only immediate difference was, as with the rest of the structure, the modernizing, as the painted cast iron radiator had been replaced with a space-saving vent in the floor. Hitch was fairly certain of what her intentions were as she stood at her bedside, smiling at him, tail swishing from side to side. She picked up on his hesitation almost immediately when she looked him in the eyes. Hitch? Is something wrong? She asked, seeing Hitch shift uneasily on his legs. Hey, uh, Sonny, are you sure about this? Hitch asked. Well, sure. I mean, I think so. A bit nervous, but who wouldn't be for their first time? If you're worried about an unexpected addition in a year, I've started taking protection, so you don't need to worry. Sunny said, her nerves also apparent in her voice. Hitch took a slow breath. I mean, I'm glad you're taking those kinds of precautions, but... Sonny, I... <laughs> I, I don't think I'm ready. Hitch confessed, seeing her ears twitch in disappointment. I really truly care about you, Sonny, and I want to be absolutely honest with you. I just don't believe I deserve you in that way yet. Sonny took a couple of steps towards her boyfriend. Deserve me? She asked, trying her best not to sound hurt, just confused. <sighs> I'm still really ashamed of how I treated you before reunification, Sonny. The law is the law. <laughs> what kind of bullshit excuse is that? I threatened you with incarceration, I even threatened our friendship, when we've known each other our whole lives. When all you were trying to do was make Equestria a better place. When you were right all along. I, I, I don't feel like I've done enough to make up for that before. I can feel comfortable being with you in that way. Now that he had spilled his heart, he stood there and waited for judgment from his mare friend, who stood there staring at him with a look of concern. After a few moments, she walked up to him and pulled him into a gentle hug. You're not the only one in Mertime Bay who's ashamed of who they used to be, Hitch. I think we've all become better ponies in the last few weeks. <laughs> I remember when you said that you wanted to do your part, and you did. You got us out of the Crystal Tea Room, you did what you could do to hold off Sprout's machine, and we've been on three fantastic dates together. No matter what you do, you're not going to be able to change the past, but just know that I will never hold it against you." Sunny pulled away from the hug and gave him a sympathetic smile. If you need more time, I am absolutely willing to wait. We don't have to do anything tonight, but if you'd like, I'd still like to share my bed with you tonight." Sonny offered, beckoning him over. I'd like that, Hitch replied, managing to smile again. Sonny pulled back the comforter, climbed into bed, and slid over to the far side to make room for Hitch. He slid under the covers and got comfortable. Sonny reached over to shut the light off before she snuggled in close and kissed him on the snout. See you in the morning, Hitch.